Beyond Bollywood, Indian Americans Shape the Nation is a new exhibition at the National Museum of Natural History, which opened on February 27th. The exhibition explores the heritage, daily experience, and numerous diverse contributions that Indian immigrants and Indian Americans have made to shaping the United States. Beyond Bollywood will run through August 16, 2015, after which it will be traveling to other museums around the country and beyond. after the founding of this country. I think many people both in the Indian community here and in the United States would be surprised to know that our history here dates back almost to when this country began. Um, one of the other things that it touches upon is what it's like to be a person of Indian origin working in these particular occupations. And um, this particular section looks at taxi cab drivers, um, looks at physicians and doctors, which is off to my right, um, also looks at software engineers and why there are so many engineers living and working in the United States. And then on my left, I want to draw your attention to a motel lobby. So if you walk up to the motel, this is the side that you would see if you owned the motel. And if you look through the window, what you'll see is what the public sees when they come to visit the motel. And mostly featured in this section are different works by young and emerging Indian American artists um, who use their particular art to pose questions, both to the general public but also to the Indian American community about different aspects of identity. And it's meant to be a nice kind of visual and also, um, I guess, emotional contrast to some of the early things that are found in the gallery, some of the large black and white images and the historical documents. This is a section that really um, enlivens it kind of through these particular expressions. And I, I want to point your attention to a particular series of works. Um, these are photographs that are called Unsuitable Girls. Um, they're by a pair of artists that are based in New York called Anjali Bhargava and Swati Kurana. And the things that they're doing in this particular set of prints are taking on stereotypes of gender that are found within Indian American communities. And they're asking questions about suitability in terms of like what should a woman behave like, look like, etc. And these are three um, in a larger series of photographs that are calling into question um, these different stereotypes. So we're moving into this section now that looks at cultural contributions um, to the American landscape. There's different types of things. One is this wall that features different hip hop artists and how they've contributed both through their art and through the activism. Up ahead on my right is a section that looks at music and contributions to the American music, musical landscape in different genres, including jazz, disco, blues, 
classical music. And you'll notice we've used the tallies in this particular, um, on one side of the table setting, and on the other side are corral wear. Um, those of you who are Indian may have seen this particular pattern of corral wear or several others, um, but many Indian immigrants who came to the United States in the 60s and 70s and 80s bought corral wear as their particular types of dishes. Some of them handed it on to their children when they went to college. Um, this section features a number of different objects um, and a number of different people. Everyone from astronauts to scientists to athletes who've achieved the highest accolades in their sports to artists. So this National Spelling Bee stage um, recognizes the more than 73% of National Spelling Bee winners since 1999 who've been of Indian American origin. It's a pretty remarkable statistic considering that we're just 1% of the U.S. population, and to my left is the trophy of the very first Indian person to win the spelling bee. This is from 1985, and it was won by Bali Natarajan. And actually, you're not able to hear this, maybe, but um, above me is a sound cone with one of the champs spelling all of the winning words. And what we're doing is inviting children and adults to be able to come up and take their turn at the spelling bee microphone um, and be part of this, this particular national experience. This particular section was very interesting for me as a curator because religion is a complex topic to be able to treat in a museum. It's often, um, even within any given religious tradition or faith, there are contesting views on how to describe it, how to display it, how to talk about it. Um, so one of the things that we did actually was go around the country interviewing Indian American young people about their faith. We asked them to describe it and we also asked them to talk about what it means to them. And so what you see displayed here on the wall to my right is different quotes of young people talking about their religion in their own voices. And this is really our memorial to Indian Americans and South Asian Americans who've experienced discrimination and violence throughout American history. Um, among the different objects that are represented, I think, is something that still gives me goosebumps when I look at it. And this is the turban of a man named Balbir Singh Sodhi. He was one of the first people killed in an act of retaliation after 9-11. Um, and his family generously donated this turban and many of his other personal effects to the National Museum of American History. And it is now part of the National Collection. It's something that is really a significant moment, not just for him and his family, but for many South Asians um, who've been targeted in various acts of racial profiling and have also experienced violence very directly. And there's a number of different photos Photographs and works of art that are part of this section of artists who have responded to, again, difficult moments in American history. We thought it was really important to actually put this very close to the front of the gallery to mark that it was and it is something that's a very much uh, an important part of our history here in the United States. So it came about in 2008, a number of local Indian community members approached the Smithsonian and asked, how about doing something that chronicles the experiences and the history of us here in the United States? And a man by the name of Dr. Richard Curran, who is the Undersecretary for History, Art, and Culture here at the Smithsonian, himself had lived and worked in India as a researcher, as a scholar, and as an anthropologist. So at that time, the community contributed some resources, and the Smithsonian contributed some resources as well, and the Indian American Heritage Project was born. Well, the, natural, the National Museum of Natural History has had a long history of doing cultural anthropology exhibitions where they feature the history of different communities both here in the United States and around the world. Um, it's also the case, as you can imagine, that the Smithsonian museums are very large and there are many different kinds of exhibitions that they're working on. So this particular gallery happened to be open during the time frame that we wanted to show the exhibition. And so that's how the partnership was formed.
Um, some of the festivals are covered in the section on religion and spirituality. Um, we've collected photographs from around the country that um, different religious communities and congregations shared with us. So those festivals are depicted um, in that collage of different photographs, which is in the section on religion in the exhibition. Well, as you can imagine, um, there, every single topic in this exhibition could be in an, ex an exhibition in and of itself. Um, we had very limited space and we were working with a specific budget and so we had to make some choices about how, how much we could feature any one particular topic. And one of the things that we aimed for was balance rather than necessarily giving a lot of coverage to any one topic. Um, that's a good question. So we're currently working with the United States State Department, the Department of State, to be able to travel it to India. Um, there are a number of American spaces that are also being created um, around India and being refurbished. So we very much hope that it will travel to a number of different cities in India.